Okay, a bit of algebra for you today. Uh, we're going to be solving quadratic equations. So hit pause, make some notes, and when you're ready, write starter and hit play again and we'll get on with the starter. Okay, here's your starter for 10. Um, four questions, factorize all four. You're experts at factorizing, so off you go. Once you've, uh, so hit pause, off you go. Once you've completed them, hit play again, and you can have a look at, uh, and we'll go through them together. Okay, so let's, let's have a go. This first one, we've got x squared plus 3x plus 2. So to factorize it, it means we've got to put it back into brackets. Now then, there's no coefficient of x squared, no number here with the x squared. So that means it's just going to be x times x, which gives you x squared. Then we take that 2, the plus 2 here, it's positive 2, and we look for the factors of 2. In this case, it's very straightforward, because 2 has only got uh, two factors, 1 and 2. And 1 plus 2 will give me 3 in the middle. So it's very straightforward plus one here and the plus two goes here and we've uh, we factorized that one let's have a look at b similar sort of thing again we have no coefficient of um, x squared so we can open our brackets and we can put x times x here which gives me my x squared the minus 10 i've got to look for factors of minus 10 oops that's 10 that will give me three now 2 and 5 come to mind straight away because 5 take away 2 gives me 3. So that's going to be a minus 2 because 5 take away 2 gives me 3. So it's going to be x minus 2 and x plus 5. Now these are very straightforward because there's a lack of coefficient. If you look at the third one, the x squared has a coefficient of 8. So we can open our brackets again. But this time we're uncertain what to put here can't just put x so what we do is we um, we take the coefficient here 8 we're going to come and look for its factors and then we take the 3 as we do normally but this time we put the 3 on the bottom and we look for the factors now with 3 it's going to be 1 and 3 definitely now with 8 it's going to be I don't know let's try 2 and 4 and this is the thing, it's trial and improvement. Now, 4 times 3 gives me 12, and 2 times 1 gives me 2. Now, 12 take away 2 gives me 10, but this is not negative. Because it's plus 3, I can't have 1 negative here. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to rub it out, try something different. So, how about if I switched sides? Instead of uh, 2 and 4, what about if I went 4 and 2? That looks a bit more promising. 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. 4 plus 6 gives me 10, plus 10. So that works. So I'm going to put my 4 here, 4x, and my 2 here, so 2x. The 4 multiplies the 1. So 4 is going to multiply the 1 here, plus 1. And the 2 multiplies the 3, so it's going to multiply the 3 here, plus 3. And I factorize that one. Happy days. On D, the last one. Again, I'll open up my brackets. Oops, I apologize. I haven't put equal signs on B or C. And on D, it's going to be equal to, put our brackets here. Again, we've got a coefficient of x squared, 5 here. So we take that 5, look for its factors. Now that's easy enough because 5 has only got two factors, 1 and 5. And then we take the plus 3, put that down here. Same sort of thing. Factors of 3 are 1 and 3. we just got to put them in the right place. Let's put 1 here and the 3 here, see how that works out. Okay. 3 times 5 is 15 and 1 times 1 is 1, so 15 plus 1 is 16. That's great but it's minus 16, so if both of them were negative, that would work. Minus 1 times minus 3 gives me my 
positive 3, but also minus 3 times 5 is minus 15, minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So minus 15 minus 1 is uh, minus 16, so perfect. So I'll take my 1 here, or 1x, and put my 5x here. Now that x, or the 1, multiplies the minus 1, so I'm going to put my minus 1 here. And the 5 multiplies minus 3, so I'm going to put my minus 3 here. And we've factorized all 4. So what I want you to do is uh, mark your work, hopefully in green pen, and in ragged, and make your corrections. Now remember, that's not just about writing the answer. Write these workings out, how we factorize each term. Okay, good. Now you've ragged it, hit pause, sort it out. Once you've done that, hit play again. We'll look at the first example of the day. Okay, so I've got two examples here. So let's look at example one. It says solve. It doesn't say factorize, it says solve. That means I've got to find out what x is. So we take this first one, x squared is equal to 4x, and we're going to try and solve it. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my 4x, I'm going to move it over to the left-hand side. It's positive 4x on this side. So, as it floats over the other side, it becomes negative. It leaves me with x squared minus 4x is equal to 0. Which is good. We want to make it an equation equal to 0. Now, I'm going to factorize the left-hand side. What's common to both terms? That would be x. So, I'll take my x and open the brackets, and I've left then with x minus 4 equals 0. Now, to equal 0, one of these terms, either x or x minus 4, has got to be equal to 0, because 0 times anything will give you 0. So, either x is equal to 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, if x equals 0, that's fine. If x minus 4 equals 0, that means, this sign means that, that means, or that implies that x is going to be equal to 4. Solutions then, either x equals 4. So we can put therefore x equals 0 or x equals 4. Those are the two solutions then. Okay? Now if you put them, you don't need to write this part down. I've just put this in blue. This part you don't need to write down when you write the example. It's just a little check. Now our equation, it says um, x squared equals 4x. Now if x equals 0, that means 0 equals 0. And if x equals 4, you've got um, 4 squared, which is 16, is equal to 4 times 4 equals 16. So so it works out. <coughs> Excuse me. So you don't need to write what's in blue. That's just a check. Right. Back to red pen. Let's have a go at this one here. So this time I've got 6x squared equals minus 9x. I'm going to put a bubble around my minus 9x. Flows it over. Crossing the equal sign comes a plus 9x. So I've got 6x squared plus 9x is equal to... 0. Now then, I've got to factorize what's common to both sides. is x, but also we've got 3 here. So we've got 3x, and that leaves me then with 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. So that means either 3x equals 0, which means so that means then that uh, x is equal to 0, or 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, which means that 2x is equal to minus 3, because that floats over and becomes minus 3 on the other side. And so x is equal to minus 3 over 2. So, therefore, x is equal to 0, or x is equal to minus 3 over 2. So what I want you to do now is copy those examples. Ignore the, the uh, 
the bump at the top. Don't write that down. You don't need that. Example one, example two. And when you're ready, hit play again and we'll look at another couple of examples. So again, we've got two, two examples, similar sort of thing. It says solve, so we've got to find out exactly what, um, what uh, x is going to be equal to. So same sort of thing, I've got plus 9 on this side, put a bubble around it, float it over, it becomes minus 9, so I've got 4x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. So I'm looking at this question, I'm thinking, hmm, how can I factorize that? 4 is a square number, x is squared, and 9 is a square number. Hmm. I'm thinking possibly dots. Difference of two squares. Okay. So if I factorize that, that's going to give me 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Fantastic. Good. So that means either one of these terms has got to be equal to 0. So either 2x plus 3 equals 0 or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So floating the uh, plus 3 over becomes minus 3 on that side. So 2x is equal to minus 3, which means x is equal to minus 3 over 2. And on the other side, I don't need the or again. Just get rid of that and get my pen back. There you go. So this time I'm going to float the minus 3 over this side. So that means 2x is equal to 3 and then... 2 goes down underneath the 3, so x is equal to 3 over 2. So, we can say therefore, x is equal to three, minus 3 over 2, or plus 3 over 2. Example 4 is more conventional factorization. We just have to have two brackets, double brackets. It's equal to 0. If I factorize that, I've got uh, x times x, because there's no coefficient of x squared here. Take my minus 12 and split it there. So what times what will give me minus 1? I think 3 and 4. Just got to get which one is negative to give me minus 12. It's minus x, so it's going to be minus 4, because minus 4 plus 3 gives me minus 1. So we can put x plus 3 and x minus 4. So that implies either x plus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0. Which means that x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to 4. It's two solutions. Quadratic. So we've got two, two answers there. Again, as before, hit pause, copy the examples down, and as we said, just the examples. You don't need this, uh, this bump up the top. And when you're ready, hit play again, and we'll look at a couple more examples before you can do some of your own. Okay, these are very similar to the last two, so what I want you to do is um, actually hit pause straight away and have a go at these two. And when you're ready, hit play again and we'll see if we, uh, we arrive at the same conclusion. Okay, so we'll, we want an equation equal to zero. So straight away, first thing we want to do is um, put a bubble around this. Oops, put a bubble around this one. It's plus one on this side, so it floats over, becomes minus one. So we got nine x squared minus one equals zero. 
9 is a square number, x is squared, and minus 1 and 1 is a square number. So again it's dots, difference of two squares. Uh, square root of 9 is 3, so I've got 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1 equals 0. And because it's equal to 0, we've got our, our equation. So that means either 3x plus 1 equals 0 or 3x minus 1 equals 0. And we've got to solve these now. Let's float that my, plus 1 over, becomes minus 1. So 3x is equal to minus 1. And then we take the 3 down underneath the minus 1. So x is equal to minus 1 over 3. <coughs> Solving on this side, same sort of thing. We float our minus one over the other side. So three X is equal to one and take the three down the escalator under the ones. So X is equal to one over three. Good. So it's either X is equal to minus the third or plus the a third. And finally, with this one, I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side. So we've got 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 equals 0. Now then, I've got to look at this. I've got a coefficient of x squared, 6, and I've got my minus 3 here. Minus 3 is simple enough. It's going to be 1 and 3. Now I need the factors of 6 that are going to combine with the 1 and 3 to give me. 7 in the middle. Hmm. How about 2 and 3? Would that work? Possibly. Let's put a 2 here and 3 there. 3 times 3 gives me 9. And 2 times 1 gives me 2. 9 take away 2 would give me 7. Which is perfect. And it's minus 3. So one of these has got to be minus. It's going to be that one. Because 9 minus 2 will give me plus 7. So... I can factorize now. And we've got 2x and 3x from the 2 and 3 there. And the 2 multiplies the minus 1, so that's going to be minus 1 here. And the 3 multiplies the 3, so I'm going to put my plus 3 here. So we factorize it. Now to solve it, we say either because one of these two terms has got to be equal to 0. Either 2x plus 3 equals 0, or 3x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x is equal to minus 3. So we've taken the plus 3 over the other side, becomes minus over the other side. And so x is going to be equal to minus 3 over 2. Or, on this side, we've got... Uh, we float the minus 1 over. We got 3x is equal to 1, and then the 3 goes down the escalator under the 1, so x is equal to 1 over 3. That's job done. So hopefully you've got the same solutions as me. If not, make your corrections. Hit pause, make your corrections. And when you're ready, hit play again, and you've got some questions you can solve for me. Okay, so a few questions for you. I think there are nine questions here. Hit pause, have a go, and when you're ready, hit play again, and you can uh, you can mark them. Okay, so these are your solutions. So mark your work. Once you've done that, I need you to rag your work, and um, then I've got a couple more questions for you to do, just uh, at the end of this PowerPoint. Okay, so some questions for you. Won't take you very long. Practicing skills, and then you move into developing fluency for me. And that's plenty, plenty for today. Good luck. I'll attach this, uh, this sheet to the assignment.